off-cycle elections are held outside the general elections due to circumstances such as death, resignation, impeachment, annulment of elections by courts, and many more. The off-cycle elections in Bayelsa, Imo, and Kogi hold a pivotal place in the country's democratic process. These elections provide a unique opportunity for a swift evaluation of the new government's performance so far and offer a referendum on how citizens in these states respond to the leadership of the recently elected administration. With former President Goodluck Jonathan calling for a review of the off-cycle elections, Nigerians continue to witness the do-or-die means of politicians to gain power. Joining us now is Professor Rukewe Ugumba, a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress. Good morning, uh, Professor Ugumba, for joining us. Well, very quickly, we've been discussing all day the off-cycle elections in Imo, Kogi, and Bayesa. And one major refrain is that it looks like we've not learned any lessons from the 2023 general elections. But the fresh angle to the conversation now is this suggestion by uh, President uh, Jonathan that the National Assembly should take a second look at this phenomenon of off-cycle uh, elections and perhaps amend the constitution appropriately. Uh, what do you think of that suggestion? I and what, what do you think of these off-cycle elections so far? Well, what can I say? Our things are very unique in Nigeria. You know that um, <clears throat> every time we change the constitution so that within six months of the general elections, all the litigation will be done so that people who come into office will not have these staggered elections. Well, unfortunately, we still haven't got any rights. So I'm, I have to say I agree with the former president that everything should be unified and aligned because of lots of complaints. So no matter what, all over the world, we know that elections can never be perfect. And certainly in Nigeria, we're still cutting our teeth. So the last election, we just concluded, obviously, we saw the, all the problems that INEC had uh, with the new laws, with the IRA, with the, um, what was it called, that machine, the Beavers machine, and all that. And then coming to this cycle, these governors who were elected four years ago, and the ones that are going to leave office, obviously they had the off cycle. So I, I agree that if you change the laws from the National Assembly constitutionally, you will then not have these staggered elections. There are pros, of course, for the staggered elections and their, their cons. For example, the pros would be this, this, this stress on the security agencies because they're not spread all over Nigeria. Um, you would have more perfect elections, if you will, because more security um, agencies will be looking at these elections to reduce the infractions, like snatching of, of ballot boxes or, you know, disenfranchisement of the, of the voters. But the con side of it is everything is not in sync. And of course, people still complain no matter what. And really, when on voting day, everybody in the nation is voting at the same time, there's that uniformity, there's that sense of belonging. And of course, we now know what to plan for. So you can stagger, for example, the governor's elections, then the National Assembly will be on a different day because it was the governor that was removed um, the last time by the court. So yes, we should have a uniform system. I agree with it completely. I think at the end of the day, eventually, if we get more electronic form of voting that is instantly transmitted with enough security, I think we'll eventually, ah, I would say, get nearer to the promised land of perfect elections but, in but, but, the, but the argument has always been, even with the uniform election, it's still mad with a lot of shenanigans like it happened, you know, in the last election cycle and you saw what happened. And in other parts of the world, in so-called America, we copy on democracy, there are still staggered elections across some states. And the question is, it's about getting the electoral system right. You feel very sad about what happened in Delta elections with INEC, and the case is still in court now. And INEC also did the same. I mean, just imagine results were written before the election were conducted itself. What would you say about the case that happened in Kogi? And now, the declaration have been made, you know, the sensitive materials, have been, you want to juxtapose that with your own experience in Delta? 
Yes, uh, uh, for sure we felt we felt we're robbed in Delta State, and actually we're in the appeal court system. We even felt that the judiciary didn't do their job. So the truth Just like is, what happened in Kogitu, right? exactly. Well, oh, I got you. There. I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Refine <laughs> the old the old pivot of this um, today's thing would be this one that we're doing. <laughs> On a very serious note. Um, it's not really fair to disenfranchise the voters. INEC culpable, the judiciary culpable, mm -hmm. all the people who did not do the right thing, they know what they did. In Delta State, for example, I can speak very clearly that we cannot win four local governments with 140,000, they claim, and they won 21 with 260,000 makes no sense, right? If you do the math, the ordinary math. But we know what happened, okay? They were, they were writing of results. There were blatant infractions. And we did not have our security agencies show up at the right time, at the right place, to make sure the voters who voted, they have their correct result sheets. Their results as we voted were uploaded. So these are issues of security. So when you talk about staggered elections and off-cycle elections, there may be a plus for that because the security could really man that. But still, it happened, as you can see, in mm. all these um, um, states and especially in Kogi State. The others were very huge margins, so it's difficult to oppose who won, for example, in Imo State. But what I'm saying is it's not fair to the voters to do this. It's not fair to Nigerians to do this. We know that people want to vote. When you keep doing the other thing, People don't have, it's like, what's the difference? Why do I have to queue in the sun all day? Yeah. Then wait till the results are counted when a different result will be uploaded. So these are the issues that we need to really address to reinforce voter confidence, to, you know, to make the system more holistic. Of course, like even he said in the United States, there will still be complaints. The yeah. election was rigged, it was all Mr. Trump said, even though it was clear that he lost the election. So people always complain, but majority of the people will know what really happened is what the results are. Well, some of these staggered elections came by as a result of court judgments, uh, some as a result of, you know, death and elections had to be reorganized. However, in the course of this uh, current uh, process, of cycle process, one of the uh, CSOs that had done a preliminary report, that's uh, the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Huriwa, says that, look, people who have lost out in the gubernatorial elections in Minimo, Baesa, and Kugi should not bother to go to court because, uh, you know, the, the judiciary is not likely to make any difference. Do you share that view? Should we lose faith in mm -hmm. the judicial system? I wouldn't, because that's where my hope lies for Delta State. The judiciary still remains the last hope of the common man. And yes, some judges will be compromised more easily, while others will be more judicious in their, in their carrying out of justice. To be honest with you, it's a body of benchers, and you can't compromise one alone. You have to be in block. So we're asking the judiciary to actually think about what is being done for the people because you know that whatever decisions you make will impact the next four years. Like I said, in Delta State, we were robbed of our elections. The, the tribunal didn't do us justice either, but we know what happened and it's not everything we have to just see on camera like that. At the end of the day, we still have hope that we'll restore our mandate in Delta State because we won the elections and that's what we are looking for. And, and I'm speaking to all Nigerians, do not lose faith. Continue to ask the questions, the tough questions. Continue to hold us accountable. I'm talking the leadership. Um, I'm very fortunate, for example, our court judgment came very quickly for the presidential elections and even Mr. Obi is now accepted, you know, the, the situation. Even though lots of Nigerians wanted change and they wanted to vote for someone else, it was clear that, you know, whoever won the election was supported by the court. And that's what we really hope for. Yes, sometimes it looks like a rubber stamp, but it's not always the case. Well, thank you very much, Professor Rukewe Ogumba, for joining us on the morning show.